My God, it's full of stars. Greetings. Now, in our Futurism Film Friday series, we are going to review one of the greatest films of all time, and certainly the greatest science fiction film of all time, which is 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick, released in 1968. And it remains one of the most influential films in the history of cinema. Adapted from Arthur C. Clarke's short story, The Sentinel, this full-length film, which is two hours and 20 minutes in length, was a groundbreaking cinematic experience for its time that defied conventional storytelling and challenged the boundaries of visual effects. Furthermore, it sparked contemplation about humanity's place in the cosmos. 2001 A Space Odyssey is known for its unconventional narrative and nonlinear storytelling. It's actually four different segments, and each segment serves as a narrative pillar contributing to the overarching theme of human evolution and its intersection with extraterrestrial intelligence and artificial intelligence. The opening sequence, known as the Dawn of Man, presents a desolate landscape inhabited by primitive ape-like protohumans, similar to Australopithecus, let's say, and the film masterfully uses visual storytelling to depict the struggle for survival and the momentous leap from using bones as mere tools to employing them as weapons. The iconic match cut from a thrown bone to a space station orbiting Earth elegantly signifies humanity's evolution and technological progress. The discovery of the monolith, a black structure that appears at key points in human evolution, sets the stage for the second act. Driven by the monolith's influence, mankind embarks on a journey to Jupiter where a similar monolith, although much larger, awaits discovery. This contained some of the most advanced shots of space exploration and humans in space ever seen up to that point. So for audiences, they were seeing space-related imagery for the very first time in a film. At this point, the film introduces the HAL 9000, an artificial intelligence system aboard the spacecraft Discovery 1. HAL's gradual malfunction and its implications for the mission and crew at a layer of tension and existential unease. The interaction between HAL and the astronaut Dave Bowman is a testament to the film's exploration of the human-machine dynamic, raising questions about the nature of consciousness and the ethical implications of artificial intelligence. In the final act, the film transcends our physical perceptions and Dave Bowman goes through a stargate and has a surreal encounter with the monolith near Jupiter. And then Dave Bowman himself transforms into a different sort of being to mark a new form of existence, symbolizing the next stage in human evolution. The HAL 9000 is left behind on the space station, and HAL's conflict with Dave Bowman, particularly the scene where HAL refused to open the pod bay doors, is a chilling exploration of human-machine interaction and the relationship between the two. The calm and calculated demeanor of HAL, coupled with its emotional manipulation and eventual admission of error, humanizes the artificial intelligence in a way that challenges preconceived notions about the nature of consciousness. The decision to give HAL a red eye is a deliberate choice symbolizing both danger and surveillance. The red glow becomes an iconic visual element that evokes a sense of unease whenever it appears. HAL's deactivation, set against some haunting music, is a poignant moment that highlights the moral implication of creating intelligent entity. 2001 A Space Odyssey is a film that invites interpretation and contemplation. The collaboration between Kubrick and Clark delves into profound existential and philosophical themes, challenging audiences to grapple with the mysteries of human existence and the vastness of the cosmos. The monolith, a recurring motif in the film serves as a symbol of extraterrestrial influence on human evolution. Its appearance at critical points in history, from the dawn of man to the edge of Jupiter, suggests a guiding force propelling humanity towards a higher plane of existence. The monolith remains an enigma, allowing viewers to project their interpretations onto its mysterious presence. The monolith has a further role in the film's sequel, 2010, The Year We Make Contact, which was released in 1984, so 16 years after this original film. The Stargate sequence, characterized by kaleidoscopic visuals and dissonant music, is a mesmerizing journey that defies traditional narrative structure. It symbolizes the transcendence of human consciousness into uncharted realms, pushing the boundaries of what cinema can convey. Now on the topic of futurism, however, this film got a few things wrong, because obviously human space travel is nowhere near what was depicted for the year 2001, which is now itself in our distant past here in 2024. 
in the film, space travel was depicted as something that regular people could do much in the same way we would get on an airplane. It was portrayed as a commoditized service available to civilians. But in reality, even in 2024, there are only ever a single digit number of people in space at any given time. So that obviously did not occur. Now remember that this film was released at the height of the space race and just slightly before the United States was about to succeed at putting a man on the moon. So that entire decade, the 1960s and certainly the years immediately before this film was in fact a space bubble, so to speak. So it is understandable that people in 1968 thought that by 2001, 33 years later, there would be missions to Jupiter and things like that. Here we are in 2024 with nothing of the sort happening. So in that sense, this film fills on futurism, but it is nonetheless extremely profound in signifying the sentient singularity, which is a theme I've discussed on this channel, as well as extraterrestrial intelligence and artificial intelligence. And this film stands the test of time. Young people today may not even be familiar with this film given how long ago it was made. But if you get a chance to watch it on the big screen, because sometimes they do screenings of this film, even though it was made a long time ago, you should do that because it's a profound, profound experience. And remember, it is one of the greatest films of all time, not merely one of the greatest science fiction films of all time. Now, if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for watching.